Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. Today we are the 13th of June 2023. Around the table we have myself, Damien Duportal. Hervé Lemme won't be able to join. He's on the train and the, it appeared that the data cellular network is not really uh, working as expected. We have Mark Waits, Stephen Merle, Bruno Varten and Kevin. Hello, folks. Uh, let's get started with the announcements. The weekly 2.410 uh, was released successfully, at least on the technical bits. We have packages, we have release an artifactory, we have Docker image. Uh, and I assume the last bit need to be done later around the change log and the last item. That change correct? log is done, published, and visible. Uh, I haven't checked the container yet. Okay, cool. Load is done. Uh, artifacts, packages. And so I checked the eDocker image. Thanks for creating the tag, Mark. Um, change log bits published. So we are okay. So, Stefan, uh, you are ready to roll for uh, updating our images and deploy that new version to Infra CI. Uh, just a point, Mark. I realized last week. I don't know if you remember when you created the release on the Docker on the container image for that the previous release. Uh, the trusted CI saw the tag because it's checking every five minutes, mm -hmm. but it did not trigger a build. The reason is because we have added a, a setup by default that say don't build tags older than three days. Mm -hmm. But you created the tag the same day, right? And that's the the really sensitive, uh, no, no, not sensitive, not the right wording. That's the, the complex setting that the date, the timestamp of a given tag by default is the timestamp of the commit pointed by the tag. And when you created the tag, no tags, no pull requests were merged on the Docker image repository since at least three days. Mm -hmm. So we had that issue one or two years ago with the CD process for the plugins. And we had to fix that by creating an annotated tag and then creating a GitHub release using that already existing tag. Ah, okay. So instead of using the GitHub UI to create the tag, I need to create an annotated tag in a separate separate clone and then push that tag. Exactly. Uh, from your machine, that's okay. From wherever you want. The reason is because when you publish a GitHub release, if the the pointy tag does not exist, then it will create it. But the GitHub API does not provide annotation because the annotation means adding metadata that can be signed. That's why it's not possible through the release uh, UI. But there is no problem to create the release. And instead of writing the tags, you can point to an existing tag that you created earlier. So how do we resolve the mistake I've made? Do I need to delete the tag and recreate it as an no. annotated tag or? No problem. Um, if you create a tag that is not annotated, the only check is once you have created the tag, for now, let's just check that uh, in the next five minutes, there is a build that triggers on trusted CI. If it doesn't, like last week, you have to start the build manually by clicking build on the discovered tag on Jenkins. And that's okay. That's the only, that, that's the way to say to Jenkins, okay, uh, you've seen the tag, you don't want to trigger it automatically, please trigger it manually. It will build the tag and push as usual, and that's okay. Ah, okay, so so the fact that if I do an, and I don't I don't currently have access to trusted. So it would have to be someone okay. who does have access. But the technique then is run the build interactively, launch the build interactively on trusted.ci, and it will detect that tag, even though it's an ant not an annotated tag. It, it will see that it is a new tag and decide to build based on the fact that it's new or 
I'm not exactly. sure how it, okay, all right. Create a new, I know, create it again and create and publish a release associated with this tag or create the release, which I'm, tr I'm trying to write this down, which creates the non annotated tag and then check on trusted CI if the build triggers automatically, otherwise start it. Okay, automatically. Um, I'm mentioning that because right now we just have to ensure that someone kick the build. So last week I had to do it when I saw the problem and I forgot to, to explain that because it was after the team meeting. Mm -hmm. This week we had commits in the past days that were merged. Usually the, the we have dependabots on Sunday. So we merge pull request Sunday, Monday. So that's okay for the weekly release. But yeah, that's important to have this in mind. If the build doesn't start automatically, it means it's the, the perceived timestamp by Jenkins is older than three days. Mm. And in that case, you can start it manually. Um, I'm saying that because right now we know if it doesn't appear here, what to check. And the goal is still automating all that whole part. So when the release process will have to create the tag, we will just have to ensure that the, it will first create an annotated tag and then create a GitHub release with a GH command line that associated to that tag. That's what the CD process is doing since one year. So we know uh, it's two or three line of shell. Is that clear for everyone? Is there any you know, question on that point? Yes. Cool. I don't have any other announcement on my side. Do you have folks? Cool. Okay, let's continue. So next weekly 2.4.11 should be released next week, the 20th of June. Um, I've already forgot about the up, next LTS. Let me copy past from last week. I no, no need to copy paste. I can call it out to you, Damian. Cool. 2.401.2, releasing 28 June. Thanks. And release candidate releases tomorrow. Tomorrow we have, okay release candidate, but no action from our side for the release candidate, right? right? Just that's a, a, a call for others to begin, for all of us, those of us who are <laughs> users of those to begin testing. Cool. I'm opening the Jenkins advisories. No emails in the 16th of May, so nothing. And no major event for me, as far as I can tell. Same for you. Mm -hmm. yep. right. Okay, so let's get started on the task that we were able to finish. Uh, one that uh, was closed just after I generated the note. So let me get started from this one. So thanks, Kevin, for opening an issue with a lot of information that were really useful for us to quickly debug and identify the problem. Since we migrated the help app, uh, Trusted CI was having some hiccups. The main reason was because one of the uh, security group we applied uh, on the new Trusted machine was pointing to the former LDAP IP that was outside our system. And uh, now that it's fully managed, we had to fix that so that the, the, it's automatically updated when the IP change, which was the case with the migration to the new cluster. Due to that, we had a, a few builds, but not all builds, that was a bit random. I don't know what is the discriminant, but some builds were stuck in a few hours or days. And Jenkins.io update was stuck since at least 12 hours. So thanks, Kevin. Thanks for your pointer. We were able to fix that problem. We triggered a build and it was automatically updated on at least the, the pages we had. 
And since some pages weren't updated, we had to wait for the Fastly decache. We waited for the operation today run by Hervé because we were also migrating today Jenkins IO to the new cluster. And in order to validate the full migration, we had to fully decache the whole website on Fastly after the migration. The result is that the change that you were expecting is now visible on production. And I understand that it's okay for you since you closed the issue after my request. Yep, I checked out the site and everything that I had brought up in the first place. Everything appears to be rendering properly now. So thank you very much for taking care of that so quickly. Cool. If only all the issues could be as complete and as efficient as this one, I would be so happy. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Any question? Okay, so next item is uh, when uh, uh, a user requires the mirrored repository. Right now, we are trying to not add repository mirrors for tiny projects because we are trying to limit the bandwidth on Artifactory. So we added an exception on short term to unblock this user. So they can still benefit from the artifact caching proxy. It's enabled and used. But when the one or two projects uh, are building on CI Jenkins IO and are trying to find artifact on the Jetpack external repository, then it's not using ACP anymore. So the user, uh, I'm not sure if the user were, was able to find, but there was uh, Hervé was able to propose them to the change it so they can re-enable ACP. So now that's on their side. So the issue is considered closed, at least for unblocking the users. Install Renovate on Jenkins Info Repository. Um, there's been a repository where they helped uh, other team members to use Renovate for dating software dependencies. I don't remember the repository, but yeah, that. Everything was okay because we saw the renovate dashboard issue uh, being opened by the bot. And uh, now th they have a bunch of dependency updates. So that works. Thanks, Hervé. Thanks, Alex, for pointing us that we had a data bug public dashboard, which is on status Jenkins IO. That's why it's a public one. We have a lot of private ones. But on status Jenkins IO, there is, I think it's services or monitoring. No, it might be monitoring. And this dashboard shows metric endpoint for us, such as the latest Jenkins core package available. And that one was empty. We had a typo on a configuration file. So thanks for, thanks to that issue, Hervé was able to fix that, uh, that problem. Any question? Uh, next one, after last the, the previous milestone, we had to migrate Puppet Jenkins IO virtual machine out from Osio OSL to a new machine in Azure virtual machine because uh, the Puppet Enterprise edition we have is not supporting the latest Ubuntu 22. So we require the Ubuntu 20 machine. Also, for security matter, that's better to have uh, security and credentials on area that we manage. Following that big change, I forgot something. We have a webhook notification on the Jenkins Infra repository, which hosts the Puppet code. The goal of that webhook is that when we merge something on the master branch, it sends an event to the Puppet machine to tell it, hey, you need to pull the latest changes from the repository. So that has been fixed and now working well. So when you merge pull requests, the Puppet agent are now in the upcoming minutes getting the latest version of the code, which wasn't the case before. Any question on this one? Uh, trusted CI out from AWS to Azure. So the, the heavy part was already done two milestones ago. Uh, these were the latest cleanup phases. Uh, now Trusted CI is now using optimized agents. Uh, we don't need uh, to add SSDs to the machine. They use local disks, they are ephemeral. They use the same spot instances as what we have on CI Jenkins IO for cost reasons and performances are better. The build time for the Docker image has increased of 50%. 
So we have better CPUs, the machine have the same size. It's just the CPU generation that changed. So uh, decreased 50%, yeah, sorry, not increased. <laughs> Uh, and all the network security group were closed, as we saw earlier, a bit a bit too much network security because we weren't able to reach LDAP <laughs> today. <laughs> but at least it shows that the trusted is uh, has improved in terms of security and accesses. It's far from perfect, but still better than before. The trusted CI virtual machine are still shut down on AWS. Uh, we might want to remove these machines soon, but the issue here is closed. Uh, we are now handling everything on Azure for that project. Um, I, so, cleanup of AWS resources to do. Uh, also, we introduced a new change, and I wanted to uh, to have a roundtable of advices here in order to reach the SSH question to go to trusted CI, we've added an allow list of public IP. Uh, that's an additional security layer. We did that initially to protect the virtual machine while we were experimenting until we had proper network security group and firewall. We decided to keep that and see if it was not a blocker uh, because we don't have a lot of person that should access that instance. Um, is there anything that could be blocking at first sight for you? Do you see that uh, taking an account that the process will be, if you need to access it, you need to open a pull request on the Azure repository to add your IP in a list of trusted admins. And once that request has been merged, then you can start accessing the virtual machine. Otherwise you are locked out. Uh, that has been a bit annoying for me, but it's just annoyance and not slower or blocker. Since I was traveling, I had to change regularly my public IP, but I'm traveling. So that's an additional layer of security if someone steal my machine. They cannot add trusted unless there is the full pull request change. Um, I was also thinking, maybe studying how to, instead of that, uh, only a low connection through the private VPN. That means you first need an access to the VPN, whether you are on the world. And once you have connected the VPN, you should be able to reach trusted only through there. That one requires a bit more rework because we need to cr create a network connection between private network and trusted network because they are separately virtual nets. But that will allow less maintenance and less pain because uh, if you have your VPN, that's enough trust and enough security from my point of view. But maybe that's more initial work, but then less maintenance each time someone needs to access trusted. So please, uh, I propose a vote at, uh, just to, to get a sight of what would be the, the preferred option, at least for you folks. Uh, can you raise your hand if you if you say we keep the current model, so allowing an exhaustive list of public IP? Okay, two hands. Uh, can you raise your hand for uh, allowing from the private VPN? One, two, three. Okay. Can you raise your hand if you haven't raised your hand yet? <laughs> Fair, okay. So that means uh, right now, maybe continuing uh, as it and see if it's a burden. If it is, we have a fallback. Is that, uh, did I understood correctly the result of the vote? For me, that's exactly what I had in mind because yeah, we don't okay. really know that rabbit hole that we are going through for the VPN. Yeah, I, I... Looks, looks easy, I agree, but Hmm. Continue oh, as we are. Really? Most of us are not. Most of us are not remote all the time, right? If one of a, if a team member were continuously remote or always having their IP address change, we might revisit the decision. But I think unless unless we get in that condition, statically assigned IPs is is good enough for now. The first choice. Okay. 
So for everyone here, if you were used to access trusted CI Jenkins IO, you need to browse to the runbooks and look at the updated runbook that shows you the brand new SSH configuration to replace your former one. Because everything is done through your SSH, your home.ssh slash config file. So you need to check the runbook mention and points to the list of allowed IP. Uh, so if you see any improvement on the runbook, don't hesitate, but the information is there, but you have to update your config in order to access the virtual machine. Okay. All right. So that, and you say that's in the runbook. Good. Okay. We have a, there is a, a DNS, a DNS record for bounce machine from outside. And then you can use internal private DNS from the bounce to the secondary machines. So the setup should take in account using this as much as possible to let us the ability to, to change the IPs if needed. Any question? Okay, so we should see the impact of this on, on the, the AWS billing of June. I will try to check that billing weekly because maybe we can start already see things, but I haven't done it yet. Making public the plugin in scores project for GSOC. So that has been done. Thanks for uh, everyone uh, working on that part to help our new GSOC uh, users. And we rotated the PAT, the personal access token used by InfraCI to manage the digital ocean infrastructure. We do it every 19 days. That's a usual process. Uh, it's an odd process to automate. Uh, but yeah, so we just have a calendar updated and everything is documented. Any question? Okay, let's check now the work in progress. First issue, remote repository for repo carops labs. Uh, that was an old issue, not prioritized, but it has been moved uh, following requests from core maintainers, some core maintainers that really needed this one. So I need help on this one. I've added the mirror, but I can't find the proper uh, URL because the URL that Maven can reach and download artifact from with the current configuration of the Stapler project, that URL uh, answer HTTP 404 when it's artifactory trying to download the artifacts. So I guess there is a kind of blockage on the, on the Nexus instance that hosts that repository. And if you browse to the URL by yourself on your web browser, you can have a, a nice uh, JavaScript browser view interactive or an HTML view, but both views does not provide a Maven metadata. So I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. And particularly, GFrog Artifactory documentation recommends to not use mirror repository and instead run the wget spider of the remote cache one time and upload this as a local repository and eventually automate that part. So you would only download what you really require on a remote repository and avoid outbound bandwidth. Of course, we said no to other repositories. And that one is the same, except it's for sensitive project. So I'm not really sure what would be the direction. I might have missed something obvious, but I wouldn't say no to another pair of I who know a bit Artifactory and Maven. So I might ask the people who, re who raise the issue. Yeah, I, I, that, that seems reasonable to me. So what I think I heard you say is that the Artifactory request to mirror the remote repository is being rejected because they're they're refusing to deliver the content to something that identifies itself as artifactory and because of that we then can't create a mirror of that thing so we have to create our own private copy of it and then maintain that private copy rather than letting artifactory do the mirroring maintenance of it that's my understanding, yes. Okay, interesting. Or for when using Shifrog while okay with Maven. Uh, yes, so 
the initial reason was to ensure the quality of service. So I don't see that as a bonus. So I will also get back to the, the person who raised the issue and will raise the priority of the issue two days ago. Mm -hmm. We'll just get back to them to, to show them the problem and see if they have other blockage that might not, that could not be clear on the issue. Because my understanding is that they should just be able to point to the system and uh, we have to ensure that that repository is excluded from ACP, from to allow the inside the it's really the case. I'm sure Hervé already implemented that. So there should be no blocker from infrastructure point of view. Let me check with the persons who raised the issue. My guess is um, I haven't searched in details. We could also contact the repository administrator and ask them uh, ask them if it's possible or if it's a wanted policy. Maybe it's an error, or maybe I just used the wrong URL or misunderstood something. And the repo maintenance. Any question for this one? Okay, so I'm gonna move that issue to the upcoming milestone because we need to at least uh, state what is the uh, what is the status and see uh, what we can do about that. Uh, next issue, not toleration maintained for not pool IRM. Stefan, uh, you've opened the issue, it's in triage. So I'm gonna let you present the problem and we'll discuss if we need to work on that now, put it on backload or close it. It's following the creation of the uh, node pool for IRM64 that we uh, introduced for public K8S. Uh, we would like to avoid um, application to, to spawn on it if they are not compatible with ARM64 that would probably be dealt by uh, Kubernetes, but uh, as we cannot be sure 100%, we need to add some taint uh, to uh, make sure that uh, not compatible um, application will not be spawned on it. But it's not easy because the, the not pool exists already and we need to make sure that the application that are running on it are able to, to migrate on the other pool before we erase this one and create a new one with the taint and then make sure that it's working correctly for the application to spawn. Am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. I've added, um, we had the issue. I've updated oh. one of the application that wasn't sticking the Elm chart to the name of the node pool. So what, uh, what did Kubernetes try to do is so, oh, I got that machine here. Uh, I don't see any anti-affinity or blockers, so I can schedule on that. There is no constraint forbidding me from trying to start the machine. The thing is that application has an image that we build and that we only build with the Intel Docker image for that case, which is a different case than the other images that Stefan already tried, which are running on IRAM. But in the case of that application, it wasn't. So it was failing trying to deploy the new version. So the good thing is that there were no service interruption because Kubernetes does not remove immediately the old version. It starts to spin the new version. And when the new version of a pod is, is started and healthy, then it added to the load balancer and start removing the old one. So no interruption, but our deployment process was broken due to that. So we did a, a quick fix by pinning the application to the Intel node pool. That was a quick fix. But now, as Stefan said, if we want to create a secondary node pool, if you want to update a node pool, we want to change the disk, you want to add taints, these operations delete the node pool and create a new one. So that means everything running on the node pool will be stopped and removed. The node pool will be deleted and a new node pool will be created. And during that time, Kubernetes will try to constantly reschedule the pod removed from node pool. This will create service interruption. That means we are too constrained for scheduling. So we need to relax the constraint so that instead of that, we would say, oh, I need 
a new node pool with a new set of toleration. We migrate the workload. We, we ask Kubernetes to migrate the workload on the new node pool, and then we delete the old one. In order to do that, we need to, to think carefully the, the, the selection of the node using the node selectors and what Stefan described, the taint and toleration, which are things to avoid building or running an, an Intel application on ARM or a Linux container on Windows host or that kind of uh, anti-affinity, I would say. So uh, that's exactly what Stefan described and that will be an improvement. So the question now for you, Stefan, is given the current state of priority, do you think you can work on that on the upcoming week? Huh. And I, I have no clue. Okay, so my proposal is that we move that issue on the backlog. We don't put pressure on absolutely doing that. And if we find time, we can pair on that topic. Is that okay for you? Yes, thank you. Okay, so for me, it goes to the backlog by default, but it will remove the triage. Uh, that's Azure Kubernetes. The goal of the toleration here is that if we have, if we use M chart with images without ARM, we really want to protect ourselves from such a problem. It's not blocker, but that's important. Thanks, Stefan. Um, okay, so backlog or bonus. Uh, the big one, migration of uh, prod public gates cluster to the new public gates cluster. All the services have been successfully migrated to the new cluster. The last one being Jenkins.io earlier today. So all services are now migrated. So we don't have any more services running on the overlap uh, overlapped network, except for CI Jenkins IO and the form of a PN that allows accessing CIs through SSH. Second thing, we have a healthy and, uh, and properly configured uh, production cluster that allows ARM as we saw. And third, we should be able to start again working on IPv6 access to some of our service, including get Jenkins IO because that should be working on that cluster. Now the next step, Hervé started to collect uh, the cleanup process. We haven't cleaned up everything. For instance, we still have the former uh, mirror bits namespace running on the previous cluster because we were waiting 24 hours, particularly for the mirrors, for the DNS records to be propagated everywhere in the world because we still saw uh, incoming requests yesterday. So now we will do a step-by-step -step process. Almost all services has been removed from the former cluster to be sure we don't accidentally have requests and we haven't seen any error yet. Mirror bit is really the last one. We have stopped, a one hour ago, stopped managing that old cluster. So now the next step will be removing a namespaces, waiting one hour before deleting and uh, releasing all the resources of the former cluster. And then we will have a set of tiny, a myriad of minor tasks about clean up the former reference to that cluster. So really nice job, Hervé. Uh, the LDAP migration, the Mirror and Jenkins IO were sensitive in terms of infrastructure and the amount of requests and everything went really fine. That was a great example of team building. We had issues due to the tentative of the LDAP last week that has been improved and uh, Final migration was done without any request lost. So nice job on that part. Uh, we only have cleanup tasks for that. So great job. And I'm adding this one on by default on the upcoming milestone despite our being off, because we should be able to to make to get some tasks. Hervé is working tomorrow, so we will take time for handover. If Hervé want to take care of the cleanup. Uh, then we will uh, postpone that task to the in two milestone when it will be back. We can start working on IPv6. Any question, comments, 
element. Okay. Next one, install and configure Datadog plugin on CI Jenkins IO. So that one accidentally led to uh, five minutes of CI Jenkins IO unavailable. So that happened, we have learned from the process. Um, the main point to have in mind for everyone, when you want to remove a plugin from a production controller, start by checking the GCAS configuration. Otherwise, a restart of the controller will lead to an HTTP 500 error because Gcask will try to configure an item that is not provided by any plugin since you just removed it from the controller. That was the root cause, lesson learned for everyone. So better roll backing the configuration first and then removing the plugin. That's the proper order. That's a that's, that could be a great warning to your blog post, Bruno, by the way. Just an admonition saying, hey, don't forget to remove GCAS configuration before deleting that plugin. Otherwise, your controller won't restart. Well, or, or add a note to your blog post, create a separate test environment where you can run, spin up temporarily tested quiet and then shut it down. Yes, but that only, uh, from my experience, that only covers 60% of the cases. For instance, when you have a production LDAP or SSO system, that's really hard to go until the moment where Jenkins load the pr uh, production-like GCASC setup. Or maybe complicated, but sometimes the effort is not worth it. So, but yeah, that could be a good point to propose by default for most of the cases. Because uh, people who have with this kind of, of the kind of problem I just described are maybe edge case. So yeah, no, good point, Mark. Thanks for the pointer as well. Which means test your change before and don't forget to check carefully your GCASC setup. So rollback setup and begin. Um, I haven't had time to synchronize with Hervé. Uh, I would like to do that to, to take that issue and at least set up the basics for sending metrics and enabling. And I will then hand over to Hervé when, when he'll be back on what to do with these metrics, if he's okay with that. If he want to take care of the whole thing to, uh, to increase his understanding of the network problem here, then in that case, I will let him do. Uh, but yeah, so by default, I need to explain with that in mind. Is that okay? But I hand over with Hervé or postpone. Because now that everything is rolled back and the plugin removed, there is no problem on CI Jenkins IO. Any question? Okay, so we, let's continue. Artifactory bandwidth reduction option. So Mark, it's your turn. And I have not, I have not done my action item, Damien, and I had that action item already from last week. I have the action item to summarize the results of our brownout, our reduced, our intentionally reduced functionality period. Uh, what Damien and I did was we disabled, Damien did the work, we dis disabled the JGit repository at the top level, making it private. And by making it private, we then ran some tests to see would it still be visible, even though the root level uh, mirror was private, would it still be visible under our public definition? And the answer came back, nope, it's not public. As soon as, as soon as you make the root thing private, all of the pointers to that root thing that are hidden inside the public repository, the public virtual repository are also private. And therefore we were locked out. We couldn't download JGit at that point. So the, the desired gee, this would be an easy way to do things. Turns out it's not an easy way to do things. We'll need more uh, discussion with JFrog to see if there are other techniques that can help us without having to enable password protection of, of everything or password protection of any things we don't publish or we don't generate. Did that did that cover enough of a description, Damien? And did I make any mistakes that you need to correct? No, that's that's also my understanding of uh, what we did, what we understand, and what we need now. 
Is that clear for you, Bruno, Stefan? Yes. So I'll and I'll write a summary of this and send it by email to to JFrog because we need we need some help from them in terms of the approach. It's we've we've got well we'll do we also need to do some data analysis on the most recent data. They've provided a new week's worth of data and we'll do some analysis in hopes of finding other things where we could we could reduce bandwidth use. Okay. Um, I have an additional thing that I haven't shared with you yet, Mark, but given that and the direction it's going and given the work that Hervé did for migrating LDAP on the new cluster, um, I feel like I should prioritize again working on a highly available LDAP instance with replication on the new cluster because now we have a fixed network on that new cluster. Mm -hmm. So the issue I had with the replication should not be present there. So um is there any objection if i start eventually we can pair on that uh, stefan on i saw n charts that propose to have a replicated ldap so the goal will be to install the new instance of ldap as Hervé uh, rediscovered we have a backup, an efficient backup recover mechanism of our current ldap which means creating a brand new instance with brand new ip since we did it recently we are quite at ease with that process we should then be able to get a restore and see how the replication work on that test instance. That might need trying with a beta.ldap Jenkins IO temporarily that I hope won't will stay temporarily, but the goal would be to say, what is the behavior when we start uh, draining the underlying machine on one of the two instances and if the LDAP is still there, that will also allow us to scale horizontally if we start seeing a lot of requests on these LDAP machines. Right. Any objection if we spend uh, some time on that topic? I and think we, we must. We need to make sure that uh, we, to, to check if we can have uh, also a read-only nodes on, on the LDAP to handle the the pressure of the of the. Uh, that, that part is a, is an, uh, is a uh, let's say, uh, implementation detail. It will depend on how is the replication process working. That's we need to assess. Okay. Got I it. don't want to spoil everything yet, but that's an implementation detail. The okay. goal for us is to be sure. That the problem here that we need to study, we want to have an LDAP instance that will first be able to handle the additional load if we enable authentication in a direct way. That's only the technical part. I don't speak about user experience here, which is another problem. Just if we had to do that, how the Jenkins Infra is going to handle that overload? We know we can scale vertically LDAP, but we would also want to be able to scale horizontally to spread the requests. The second thing is when we need to operate the Kubernetes cluster at least once a month, that's what that's what our average, we don't want user running a build to suddenly have a request being in error because authentication is done for one or two minutes. That was acceptable until now, but if we enable LDAP on Artifactory for all requests, then that would be a problem. Great. Hence the need for highly available LDAP, just to be sure we can have an inst we support one instance being done while maintenance or surprise maintenance. Uh, okay, and Mark, I don't know if you communicated with Artifactory about the problem, um, uh, the UI not being able to generate the settings XML with the encrypted password for you for developers. Oh, I have not. That's still my action item. That's another one on my list. We we didn't even discuss it with them in our in our status meeting because we were too busy with other topics in the status meeting. Okay, is there anything we can do to help? Do you want to hand over part of this task to help you, Mark? No, let me let me just take it. I'll something. just get it done. Okay. That's that's one I don't want to. I don't want to change our interactions with them. No problem. Any other question or points or element on the artifactory bandwidth reduction topic? Okay, so that one, we keep it on the upcoming milestone because that's a priority topic for us, of course. Next important topic, Ubuntu 20 to offer upgrade campaign. So we upgraded CERT CI during the past milestone. As I said last week, 
one or two virtual machines per week is already enough for that upgrade. Um, so now the target for me will be to run, we have two machines running on AWS, two tiny machines. I think it's, no, rating is already a cluster. So we have usage and stats, Jenkins. I think that's two minor services regarding telemetry. So I propose that we upgrade these two machines to Ubuntu 22 during the upcoming milestone. Is that okay? So two remaining in AWS. Uh, and in parallel, I'm still trying to work on CI Jenkins IO, a new controller virtual machine that will run on Ubuntu 22. So that one is uh, later, it's this one. Done in here. Is that okay for you? Do you have other question about that high level task? No. Let me remove the, the other task. Which task? Sorry, the, the yeah, the one you are on because you moved oh. it up. No, 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 don't move it. That's okay. another, it's just a reference. Okay. Uh, Matomo GitHub Docker repo. So we have that request from Gavin. We didn't add the time to, ask, to do the initial assessment. I had a message earlier on either the pull request or the issue. The goal is just to synchronize with Gavin to do the initial deployment of a Matomo instance on our infrastructure. So I guess we should be able to start working on that during the upcoming milestone. That it looks good for you, Stefan. I assume we can work on pair on that on this one, or I will take it by default. Yeah, the main the main job is to spawn a, a MySQL uh, service. Exactly. So I might need your help on splitting tasks. So you take some element, I take some, or we work together on this one. Is that okay Thank for you? Wish. Yes. Main task is from the assessment I did earlier today, we have all the information we need from Gavin. So it's our, it's our job now to get started and do feedback if we need. Have all info required. Permissions. Any question? Uh, next one, Kubernetes 1.25. I will want to upgrade the digital ocean cluster uh, during the upcoming milestone. I haven't seen anything wrong on the changelog that should impact these two clusters. So I will just do a double check. Uh, and I would I plan to run that operation ideally Friday morning. Is there any objection on that timing? Cool. Uh, I, don't, I don't require help, but anyone interesting to walk or pair on this one is welcome to join and ping. Uh, next one. That's an issue that I think we should be able to close. Um, so Damien, on Kubernetes, I've got, I guess I've got an open question. So mm -hmm. 1.25 reaches end of life in October of, of 2023. So we'll roll over yes. to 1.26 next quarter or 1.27? Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. We have to roll on 1.25 before end of July. Got it. In any case, uh, and yes, one twenty six should be done during the summer. Thank you. One dot twenty six will be a tiny release. One dot twenty five is a huge one. It's a, every three releases that you have huge, huge steps. Ah, thank you. So next issue, we had a user having issues with um, uh, changing Jenkins file and permission on their repository. We haven't heard back from them. I'm a bit annoyed because I feel bad closing the issue, but we don't have feedbacks and yeah, I'm not sure what could be done. I'm currently checking if they merge the pull request, they ask me help on. Uh, no, I'm not looking at the proper. So yeah, I guess, yeah, they haven't done anything. So. 
if it's is it okay for everyone if I keep that issue until last milestone? But if we don't hear from them next Tuesday, then we will close the issue because there is nothing else we can do. The pull request is now green with the change that applies the recommended setup for plugins. The build is okay, so they should be there. And for the problem about the not seeing, not being seen as a trusted user, they have to use and follow the procedure for being plugin maintainers. They have direct admin re access to the repository, so they should. They have everything on their mind, on their on their hands. So I don't know what we can do more for help there. Any question? Point feedback. No, okay. Um, just a reporting about the new CI Jenkins AU VM instance type. So right now uh, I'm fighting with the new inbound uh, agents for Azure VM agents that uh, team did. Um, I'm having, it's really hard to set up on instances such as trusted CI. I thought it could be easy to test the whole scripting of that part because you need to write shell script that will take care of creating the service that connects back to Jenkins. It's not that much, except that it tend to connect to a public URL. And with trusted, we have a specific setup that makes it hard. So uh, my initial assessment of it will be easy to test on trusted CI is not a good assessment. So I'm going to start testing with a new testing instance like Stefan used to do on CI Jenkins IO directly. I will try to work on this one. The reason I'm doing this is because we need to first move the agents to the new network and we need inbound agent for that because otherwise CI Jenkins IO won't be allowed to SSH to that subnet. And once this agent with a new proper setup on a proper network with a proper storage account will be set up, then I should be able to bootstrap the new machine and start the, the test. I did a full test, a full re uh, restoring test. So that take uh, four hours to back up the full Jenkins home and sync it to the machine. And I have an instance with no internet access that starts and I see everything uh, green, uh, like I expect on CI Jenkins IO. So that should not create any problem. The thing I wasn't able to test was to spin up real life builds because that will happen only once we will have stopped the other. And we will have, of course, issues with blacklisted IP, which are not configured as code and written somewhere when reaching other clouds. So we might have, yeah, we will have to announce that change and check it carefully during 20 to half hours. So not not when a lot of bomb builds are running, for instance, or not if we need a lot of merge of the call. Uh, my plan is not to do that for the upcoming milestone, but in two weeks. I will prepare all the work for that this week, though. It's constrained by the inbound agent, of course, so that's why I don't want to be too optimistic here. Any question? Points you want me to clarify from that topic? So the, the, the inbound agent, um, someone who's working on it to help you out right now is is changing the code of, of the way it's dealing on Azure? Oh, technically it works. It's just you have to, to, it's just that the proper setup to have something working is not easy to get compared okay. to Kubernetes plugin. You have to find the correct Jenkins URL, the correct URL, the correct parameters, and you have to write the shell script properly and adapt it to our system where Jenkins is not admin. Okay. So I need to, um, I think that will be worth sharing that with you because you wrote the part with the Datadog setup and in the end you remove the, the pseudo permission from the Jenkins user. Yes. And I need to insert my code on that script. Okay. And the cloud in this part. Yes, exactly. Okay. So uh, this morning I successfully, uh, with Trusted, I successfully started an inbound agent, which script is sleep 10,000 seconds. I was able to SSH to the agent, uh, log in as Jenkins and run every manual steps with success okay. that created an agent that built Jenkins IO. The thing is that the parameters I, I use for spinning up the agent were, where uh, where uh, are not we cannot automate them because I use a direct TCP connection and I don't try to use a GNLP URL. So I use a specific set 
of flags for the agent process that can be done because I need information from the controller. In that case, that was manual, so I was able to retrieve the information directly on the uh, ephemeral agent, but it's not easy to run. Okay. And that is caused by the specific network setup we have for trusted CI. So I've already opened the issues and I will report back, but now the goal is to switch that to CI Jenkinson. I Does it, it make sense? Is that clear? Yes. Thank cool. you. Thanks for the question. And so the last issue, artifact caching proxy being unreliable, that will be that also blocked by inbound agents. So here I am. Uh, now, can we check the new issues unless you have questions on the current working process? No? Okay, so let's check for the new issues to see if we have tray age. Uh, no toleration and taint, we already covered it and I forgot to remove the tray age. Done. Proposal for application in publicate to migrate to RM64. Oh, Stefan. Uh, that's yours, right? I, I need to date it, no? Because now everything has been migrated to public 8 s so mm -hmm. we may have more candidates. Absolutely. Okay. Do you feel like uh, we can add it to the milestone and we work together to select one of these applications and migrate oh, it and stop there? It's already selected. That will be reports. Reports? Yes, because it's in engineers. Oh, okay. and Nginx is already ARM64 compatible. You say compatible? Okay, so yeah, com com is, that, is that the correct wording, Mark? Compatible with ARM64 CPU? Is that yes. compatible correct? That's correct. I should trust my English way more. Okay, so I've designated, I, I've I've pointed my yeah, finger you are at you. Me. <laughs> you are volunteer for that, as I say. <laughs> and you are working on this. Thank you. <laughs> so is this a place where we could add check boxes to each of those little items and therefore get a checklist here that yes, at least I've, I've, I've been using Damien's technique recently more and more of yes. I'm going to put a checklist on this and, and I'll put a link to the, the pull request for each checklist and check exactly. the box when I have the link. I will Wait, do that. Please. You're right. But only for the second bullet yes, list. Yes, that part. Yes, the first oh, bullet only list for the potential is, is, candidates. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. The, the first one is all the candidates, uh, all the all the possibility, but the candidates are the, are the only one that we can really Got think it. of using on ARM. And maybe, and most probably, we will run Matomo on ARM64, by the way. Uh, yeah, why not? Probably. Yes, there is an official image. They provide right. an official image. I checked system. for you, yes. Exactly. And the only blocker was the MySQL image they used that wasn't behaving properly. But we don't want to run MySQL on Kubernetes. So No, that would be a separate services, yes. Okay, so that one is... But maybe the taint will have to come first. Hmm... No need to. In any case, we can have both. Uh, taint, adding the taints is a, let's say, it remove the burden of specifying the, uh, the not pool not in the values. Yeah. I don't see other tray age issue recently opened. Uh, so for me, we have covered all the topic and we have a, a new backed, um, milestone. Is there anything else you want to discuss about the priority of the meeting or should I stop recording? My 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 actual task is not in there, but I think it's... Useless. I think we can stop recording. I have some yeah, topics stop. after recording, but I think we can stop recording. Cool. So for everyone watching the recording, see you next week. Bye-bye.